The Steam Deck is often praised for its game mode, its ease of use, and how easy it is to get into games, but that's only half of the Steam Deck experience. Beyond the confines of game mode is a wonderland with infinite possibilities. Desktop Mode Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass, Volume 3. Desktop Mode is the other half of the Steam Deck experience. SteamOS is made up of two different halves. First is the game mode. This is what you'll see when you first boot up your Steam Deck, the Steam interface, an easy way to access all of your Steam games. And truth be told, if you're using this primarily as a gaming device, then game mode is the best place to play all of your games, especially if you're handheld. If you're just starting out with a Steam Deck, I recommend going back to Volume 1 of the Masterclass, link in the description down below. Volume 1 will give you all the basic tips you need to know. And and if you do end up liking this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and press that bell icon. That way I know I'm doing good. Accessing game mode really is that simple. From game mode, all you have to do is press the Steam button, go into the power menu, and then press switch to desktop. You will then switch to desktop mode. Note that if any game is currently running, this will close out of the game. As you can see here, this is desktop mode. This is what desktop mode looks like on a brand new Steam Deck. But before we get started, let's familiarize ourselves with a few different concepts. First and foremost is the file system. You can access your files by clicking on that folder icon. This opens up the Dolphin file browser. Why is it called Dolphin? I really don't know. But what matters is, this is where all of your files live. The one complaint I hear a lot about is how people are quite unfamiliar with the Linux file system. But the truth is, for the average user, there aren't too many places you need to be to access everything you'd want. So I'll be showing you some of the more important file system directories. First and foremost, of course, being your home folder. This is the folder where you'll want everything to be. Everything that's on your SSD, that is. By default, it's got a few basic folders. It's got the desktop folder, documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, and videos. It's not unlike your user folder in Windows, but there's far more under the hood. But if you press this menu button and press show hidden files, you'll see a ton of additional files that are far more important. All of them are important, but not all of them are relevant to your purposes. One such a folder is the .local folder, and inside of that is the share folder. As you can see here, there are a lot of configuration folders. Like for example, I've played Celeste on this device. If I double click Celeste, it shows me all of my Celeste saves that I have on the system, since Celeste is a native Linux application. As you can see here, this has all of my save data. But definitely the most important folder in the home folder that's hidden is the .steam folder. If you double click this, you have a bunch of, you have a bunch of sim links to different folders. We're just gonna go to the Steam folder inside .steam. And inside here is basically the entire Steam application. But for most users, the most important folder is the Steam Apps folder inside of the Steam folder. This is where you'll find everything you need. You'll find the games that are installed on the SSD themselves, as well as any compatibility data, any shader cache, and even any workshop mods. So let's say you need to modify something in a game. So your game can be found in common. And as you can see here, I have a bunch of games downloaded. Let's say we want to mod, I don't know, Cyberpunk 2077. Double click on this folder and you're in the Cyberpunk folder. You'll see a ton of DLLs and a ton of other files too. I mean, this is literally the game directory. This is where the entire game lives, like seriously. Not only do all of your games live here, but also all of your Steam runtimes, like Proton or the Steam Linux runtime. I wouldn't recommend touching any of those unless you know what you're doing. One of the more mystifying folders is of course the compatibility data folder. Inside the compat data folder are all of these different numbered entries. What could these all be? Here you need to know your game ID, and I don't know any of my game IDs off the top of my head. So let's say we go into folder 22380. This is the game ID for Fallout New Vegas. Inside this mysterious 22380 folder is a PFX folder. If you double click into that, you'll see a couple of different files and two folders. You'll want to go into Drive C. And inside Drive C, you'll see a unusual facsimile of a Windows file system. The C drive, more specifically. 
Like you've got your program files, your program files x86 here, program data, users folder, windows folder. Let's see what's inside the windows folder. And it's got a facsimile of windows in here too. So let's go into the system32 folder. Yes, there are a lot of files in here, a lot of DLLs and all that stuff but it's far less than a true Windows installation. The point is to have enough of the underlying file system, enough to make the games work properly. The Proton prefix it provides enough of the Windows folder structure to provide a game a place to put its save data. But of course, do keep in mind that different games store their data in different places. Some games may have put their save data in their installation folder, you know, where the game actually lives. Some won't have theirs in documents. It really depends on what game you're playing, and this is an issue that happens on Windows as well. It's partially because there's no real standard as to where games should put their save data on Windows. But it's whatever, I guess. And of course, we can't forget about the .var folder. What's inside the .var folder? The app folder. Inside that are, of course, configurations for your different flat packs. Like let's say for example I've got this, an anime game launcher. So as you can see here, this has my configuration data for the anime game launcher. You see it's got all this stuff, data, anime game launcher, and heck it's even got the installation for Genshin Impact. But of course, for my non-Steam games, I prefer having my own separate folder for those games. The process for creating a new folder is very simple. Heck, you can even right click and make a new folder this way. Like for example, I'm making a brand new games folder. This is where all of my non-Steam games will live. Nice and neat and organized. Making a games folder in your home folder is not strictly necessary. But come on dude, it's so easy to do and it helps out with organizing all of your games. But yes, this is strictly for non-Steam games because as you know Steam games go in their own separate folders. And finally, let's talk about the SD card. The SD card can be easily accessed by pressing that primary button in the bottom left corner. This is of course assuming you formatted your SD card in game mode. There are actually two SD card directories, one in run, media, deck, some number sequence, and one in run, media, MMC BLK0P1. Most tutorials online are going to refer to Run Media MMC BLK 0P1 as the main directory for the SD card. By default on your Steam Deck's SD card, there should only be a Steam Apps folder and a library folder .vdf file. Of course, I've been using this SD card for a while now, so it's got a bunch of other files and other games as well. And of course, installing games onto your micro SD card will put them in the Steam Apps and then Common folder. And of course, as you can see here, I've installed a couple of games on my micro SD card. But of course, even if you download a game to a micro SD card, shader, cache, and compatibility data will still be on your SSD. By default, at least. So that about covers it for every major folder you need to know. Can't think of any other directories the average user needs to know. But if you can think of any, please let me know in the comments down below. Next, let's talk about the process of downloading new applications. In the bottom left corner, you should see an app called the Discover app you can download brand new applications by going on the Discover app. The Discover app lets you download what are known as Flatpak versions of an application. Much like the Apple App Store or perhaps Google Play, this can be your one-stop shop for new applications and updates for said applications as well. There are a wide variety of applications and extensions and plugins that you can get through this application alone. And more often than not, these programs, once installed, will work out of the box no dependencies or downloading anything needed. The application takes care of all of that for you. Like for example, you can download your web browsers. You can download like Firefox or Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or whatever really. There's a lot of browsers with Linux support out there that are on the Discover App Store. All of this is powered by the FlatHub repository, a massive repository for Flatpak applications. It's not just Steam Deck utilities or web browsers or even productivity software. You can even find games and emulators within this repository, though some of them we may have to cover in a later video. But I just wanted to give you the basics. And let's not forget that sometimes you you can run applications downloaded off of the internet, kind of like what you do with Windows. But while we're on the topic of flat packs, let's talk about some flat pack recommendations I recommend for every Steam Deck user, period. And no, Decky and Emu Deck are not flat packs, so I won't be mentioning them. These are in no particular order. First and foremost is Proton Up QT. For those not in the know, the Steam Deck comes with the technology Valve dubs Proton. 
Essentially, it's what runs all of your Windows games on the Steam Deck without, you know, having to run Windows. Proton in most cases is fine, but Proton GE has additional fixes and also some codecs and whatnot that Valve cannot legally include, you know, without paying a fee. Proton UpQt gives you access to Proton GE and a wide variety of other compatibility tools. Do note that Proton GE does not update by itself, and so every now and then you'll want to launch Proton UpQt to get the latest is Proton GE. Next up is Proton Tricks. Proton Tricks is a multifaceted toolset, allowing you to make changes to a game's Proton prefix as needed. Need to install some Windows components in that prefix? You can do that. Also, a lot of tutorials require the use of Proton Tricks to get things done. Even two of my own tutorials, Fallout New Vegas modding tutorial and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DXHD require it. So it's always handy to have just in case. Next up is a web browser of your choice. Yes, the Steam Deck nudges you to getting Google Chrome. Yes, and that will ensure most websites will work properly as expected. Though Firefox works just as well too. You can get Firefox or anything based on Firefox. You could also get Edge or Brave or Opera even. It really doesn't matter, just get a web browser. Next up is FlatSeal. FlatSeal is a permissions manager for all of your different Flatpak applications. You can manage your Flatpak's permissions, such as being able to access Wi-Fi or not. You can also give other Flatpaks access to files and folders that they may not have access to by default. And yes, while KDE Plasma now has access to Flatpak permissions and such, I find some of the options kind of lacking, so I think Flat Seal is an absolute must for anyone starting out on the Steam Deck. The next couple of recommendations are purely optional depending on who you are, but I do recommend them personally. Next up is the Hero at Games launcher. I've talked about this launcher a couple of times, and it's even on Windows, but its best use is just playing your GOG. Epic Games and even Amazon Games on the Steam Deck. Much like Steam itself, not every game from the Epic Game Store or GOG or even Amazon will work out of the box. You know, some like Fortnite don't work, obviously. But it really is one of the best ways to access most of your free Epic Games uh, games. And speaking of Epic Games, Epic Games is giving away a bunch of free games like between now and Christmas, so if you want free games, go get them now. I'm not gonna blame you for it. There are also third-party clients for services such as NVIDIA GeForce Now, or Game Pass Streaming, or Chiaki for Deck, an application that can stream your PS5 games from your PS5 to your Steam Deck no PS portal necessary. So that about covers all of my Flatpak recommendations. As for both Emu Deck and Decky, those warrant their own separate videos, which hopefully I'll make in the future. And of course, no Steam Deck video is complete without one really cool trick. And this one is really cool. This is what I call the nested desktop mode. The instructions are quite simple. While in Steam Desktop mode, open the Start menu, go to Lost and Found, and you'll see this icon right here. Nested Desktop. Right click it and press Add to Steam. It may take a bit to successfully add this to Steam, but once it does so, feel free to go back to Game Mode to try it out. You can then go into Game Mode, go into your Steam library, go over to your non-Steam games, which will be over on the left, then look for Nested Desktop. You'll see it added as a game. Go ahead and launch it like you would any other Steam game. You should see the familiar desktop environment load up, but that's weird. Did we go into desktop mode? No, we're still in game mode. You can enter and exit nested desktop mode at will, but do keep in mind that you will need to make a new controller configuration for nested desktop, or you could just download a community configuration. Are there any real limitations? Well, for starters, I wouldn't run any Steam games within nested desktop mode, that's for sure. But I think that's about all of the limitations I can really think of. Now you may be asking, how do I install non-Steam games and how do I add them to my Steam library? Well, in the interest of time, I'm going to save that for a separate video featuring multiple different game launchers as well. So if you guys want me to make that video, then be sure to let me know. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.